I want you to think of bleach. Really great product, awesome disinfectant, will kill you if you put it in your morning coffee. Yeah, now I want you to think of ammonia. Also, really great product, really good disinfectant, and will kill you if you put it in your morning coffee, except it's in your tap water. Yeah, so ammonia, chemically speaking, is a compound of hydrogen and nitrate. It's nitrogenous waste, and it's in a colorless and odorless gas. Keep in mind that this is a byproduct from nitrate. So it means that if nitrate gets into water, it can also turn into ammonia. Ammonia has some commercial use, such as in cleaning products, in ACs, in refrigerators, as well as in fertilizers for agriculture. However, when it gets into our NZ rivers, it has some serious negative effects, one of which being it's extremely harmful to humans. Like I said, it has similar characteristics to bleach, so that can have some serious consequences on yourself. It's also extremely toxic to any marine life. If the concentrations of nitrate and ammonia get any higher in rivers, oceans, and waters, it will kill all living organisms. And if it gets into our fresh waters, it'll be completely undrinkable. We've already had problems with nitrate and ammonia concentrations being too high in our waters. In 2013, New Zealand exports had around five to $10 million lost after creating 42 tons worth of milk powder to be sold over to China, which was discharged because there was too much nitrate to be used as a consumer product. So where does all of this nitrate come from and why is it in our rivers? Primarily comes from urine, specifically livestock and from our own. In livestock, cows and sheep will urinate themselves onto nearby soil. It's too much for the soil, so it makes its way into nearby rivers. Unfortunately, with our current agricultural methods, there's not a lot of ways that we can prevent this. However, we can deal with our own urine. Our own urine is dealt within wastewater treatment plants. Wastewater treatment plants takes all the wastewater that we currently have and goes through vigorous fertilizers, excuse me, um, processes and filtration devices in order to get rid of as much stuff out of it as possible, getting it as close to fresh water before releasing it into the rivers. The specific process that deals with getting rid of ammonia and nitrate in our waters is aeration, also known as nitrification. Nitrification is simply the process of turning ammonia back into nitrate in a liquid form before it's removed in a different process. The specific way that we do this, and the most common way, is with oxidative lagoons. This simply consists of the partially treated water, also known as sludge, with artificial aerators and nitrifying bacteria. Nitrifying bacteria undergoes biological processes to help convert the ammonia back into that liquid nitrogen for it to be later removed. And this is a biological process. However, the oxygen needs to be in extremely high concentrations in order for the process to, processes to occur. And the problem is with our current artificial aerators. Our artificial aerators are extremely mechanical and often require extra spinning parts and extra uses of energy, such as electricity. And the problem with that is that they constantly break. And if something snaps within a wastewater treatment plant and it goes into that wastewater, obviously someone has to go get it. And yeah, not, not my personal job. <laughs> um, so there must be a better solution to something like this. How can we make our artificial aerators more efficient and easier to create high concentrations of oxygen without constantly failing? Well, I believe that we do have a solution here today, and that is with the use of the Aquero unit. The Aquero unit is a Venturi mixing system. So this means that it's an extremely solid state construction. There is no mechanical parts. It uses laminar flow to oxidize the water, and there's no extra electricity required in order for it to function. Only two leaf blowers that are on the outside of the river, and it's not inside. Here's how it works. Firstly, air from the blowers takes oxygen or air and brings it to the base of the Aquarius system. Then, coarse bubbles are created in the venturi part, and it creates an airway, which causes all the sludge from the bottom of the partially treated water to move up and is excreted at a high rate laminar flow. Um, this is on the top of the surface water as well. Then, the uh, tiny um, dissolved bubbles create really small oxygen bubbles. They come up, and then they go to the surface of the water. Here is the trick. The laminar flow on the surface water actually creates a current on the top of the surface water. 
meaning that the fine bubbles can't actually reach the top of the surface water. So it distributes itself along the river around 15 to 20 meters before leaving the pond. And this drastically increases the rate of absorption in oxygen. We have some recent stats of it already being used. Specifically, in the dissolved oxygen, we have a diurnal cycle of day and night showing the increase and decrease in rates of dissolved oxygen. The Aquero is constantly running, and it's picking up sludge and pushing it out, causing the, oxidations, um, the ox oxygen concentrations to greatly increase. And the one thing that this Aquero unit that nothing else does is that it uses the algae that's on that little sludge and bacteria to be put into particles and causes it to um, create a byproduct of oxygen due to photosynthesis because it's algae and it's on the surface of the water. So that means sunlight can come into it and create more oxygen. And this is drastically increasing our rate of oxygen. We've recently had a, well, sorry, with our results from what we've currently used this with, we've had drastic decreases in the amount of ammonia in our rivers due to that high oxidation. We've had about 70% below the required rates of ammonia being able to get into our, into our waters. And more so speaking, with, in comparison with our other mechanical um, aerators, there is almost, excuse me, with our mechanical aerators, there's almost no failures across each year because there's barely any spinning parts. So to summarize, we have a lot of problems with ammonia in our waters, and it's creating a lot of pollution. It's almost becoming one of our primary sources of pollution within NZ waters. And I really believe that we have a solution here. So are we going to take it? Thank you. <laughs>